He's the voiceover studio engineer of the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad with a knowledge of recording studios unmatched in his field. He's a voice actor from Buffalo, New York, with 30 years experience in recording studios and behind the mic. He solves people's home voiceover studio problems in the blink of an eye. Together, there's no studio problem they can't solve, and they'll do it for you tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Now, live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Hey, everybody. Right. We All made it. All right. Welcome to FAFCON and East West Audio Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, a couple of minor little technical difficulties. You guys rock for waiting for us like you do every single week. <laughs> uh, you know, when you, when you go on remotes, anybody that's ever been in radio or did any of this kind of stuff, these sorts of things happen, but we solved it. We got two cameras, we have guests, we have fun, and that's why we're here. And we're here at FAFCON. And uh, what's been your experience so far? This was your first FAFCON. What do you think so far? It's, I, I didn't know what, I had no idea really what to expect. And uh, it's been a very good experience for me. I'm not a voice talent, so I was wondering what would I benefit from attending this event. You just don't think you are. The, well, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the, the networking, of course, is really important. The camaraderie. Yeah. And I also joined some sessions on things like family, business, uh, getting things done, you know, all kinds of stuff that you normally wouldn't uh, think of would be at, a, at an event like this. So yeah. I got a lot back out of it, too. I told you you would. And it's I think great. It's, I think it's great that we were able to do this from here so people can actually see uh, what we do and they can witness the Hydra. <laughs> yeah, the Hydra. Why don't, you, why don't you take a quick shot of that? And uh, It's actually much simpler than usual. The Hydra yeah, because we're, we're not on Skype this time, but you have to see how this is all set up. It's... Uh, it's quite a mess, actually. So, <laughs> so oh, and now we can see the audience, too. Hey, everybody wave. You're now on East West Audio Body Shop. All right, let's see if I can follow a format of some sort here. Are you filming me eating this? Yes, we are, as a matter of fact. All right. So I, maybe we should try and get our first guest on. Yes, we should. What? Maybe we try and get Bob on now he's still here. Yeah, corner him. Yeah, hold on, hold on one second. Talk we're, for a second. Talk gonna, amongst yourselves. We're going to get Bob Sauer. Um, who's hey, Bob, if you come on right now. One of our biggest rock stars of the show is Bob Sauer. So we're trying to get him on into the seat before he sneaks out of here. We've cornered him. So. Our guest tonight is one of our favorite guys, Mr. Bob Sauer. Got to raise the camera just a little bit. This is, you know, it's, how's that look? Okay. That looks, yeah, just turn it a little bit. Yeah, we got him. All right. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. For the first time you've joined us. Yes. But you've watched the show. Actually, I confess I haven't. Oh, gosh. We're going we're gonna to have sorry. to really. Uh, but I figured it, by being a guest, it was the best option I had of uh, making sure that I got to take part in it. Yeah, well, we're going we're to have you on regular. We can talk about some other <laughs> stuff. But uh, you're, one of the, you're one of the people that is the biggest supporter of FAFCON. Why do you feel hmm. it's so important to, to continue well, to get into this? Well, okay. At the end of the day, what we all need is to have relationships with people who understand what it is that we do. People who don't go, uh, what's the most common question I get? What can I hear you on? Right? Or any number of other inane questions. What cartoon characters have you done? Or whatever. Um, the, the sense of family or community that we have is nothing short of amazing here at FAFCON. And it's unlike any other experience. I've done workshops, I've done you know, conferences, have attended them and even presented once. Um, you know, all of these kinds of things I've done, but the experience of hanging out with, being with people who so totally get it is unique. It, is. it really is. And 
within minutes after the first one started, I said to myself, I can't allow myself to miss one of these if I have any way at all. I mean, I, I suppose some sort of family crisis could happen or something that would prevent me from attending, but uh, other than that, I'm going to be at all of them because I simply derive so much encouragement and uh, joy from being here, from in, investing in other people's lives and, and allowing them to invest in mine. I, you know, it's not a one-way street, and it's incredible. And you guys now, you know, Dan, you've been before. George uh, has now had the experience as well. So you can see that it's not just um, a bunch of people hanging around and you know holding hands and singing kumbaya or whatever. We did try uh, that earlier. Yes. Actually, I think it went on at, at and karaoke it probably was last time. yes. Well, the karaoke, of course, is a different kind of thing. But anyway, it it, it really is incredibly encouraging. I, I you know over and over again you hear, wow, I thought that was I was the only one, right? I thought that only happened to me. You hear that over and over again. So it's encouraging to find out uh, it's not al- you're not alone. We're not alone. And uh, so kindred spirits. Uh, the opportunity to pour into other people's lives and the opportunity to gain insights, uh, what, what Amy and Pam and, and Connie call the, the golden nuggets. Uh, you know, the experience is just chock full of those things, those little nuggets of information that you had no idea. And what's really thrilling is when you're talking with somebody and they go, ooh, that's my golden nugget for the moment. Yeah. I mean, that isn't amazing experience it really is yeah. there's, it's amazing when, when because it's very different from other conferences where you know, there's a lot of participation it's not just a presentation someone leads Correct. a session and everybody gets to toss out what it is that you know that even the is ones their that experience. are led by somebody whose expertise is being shared there's still an interactivity to it that goes way beyond come on up and read some copy right and uh, you know the, the give and take and the free flow of information and the people who are willing to candidly share what they know, it's all just, it's breathtaking, it really is. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you've been doing is you've been working with a local charity every time we do FAFCON. Right. What was the charity this time? This time it was Actors for Autism, and the grand total that we donated was $3,310, which is just a breathtaking wow. amount of money when right. you think about it. Amazing. It came out of the pockets of people who were... Pocket change, basically. Yeah, yeah. What we people right. are carrying just over people the People handing over you know, a few dollars out of their pocket, and uh, people just came kept coming up to me and handing me more money for the charity, of course, not, not for me. And, um, I mean, it was thrilling as I watched the totals add up. It was like a telethon. Uh, just, it really was. It was amazing. Yeah, and, of course, it's a great organization. Children with autism, I'm the father of a, a boy who has uh, high-functioning uh, high autism, and a number of others who are here have kids who are autistic, uh, one or two. And um, communication issues are uh, really significant with kids who have autism. So it was a real natural fit for us because obviously what we want to do is a cha- uh, support a charity that's local, that's connected in some way with what we do. It's not just, you know, you could throw a stone and hit a charity in almost any city in America right. uh, in any given direction. But uh, to find one that connects with what we do. And I, I think part of the reason that people were so generous this time is because this really did resonate. It did. Not only because it was autism, but because it was we who are voiceover performers, we are voice actors, you know, recognize that here's an organization that represents us and doing something substantive for, for kids and now adults who really need uh, help with communication and with functioning it's amazing well well bob i know you got to get going because you've got to you've got to get moving out of here but i really appreciate you coming on and most importantly we really appreciate everything you do for uh for the voiceover community with all the support and all those other things you're number one in my book (laughs) thank you very much george bob sauer a pleasure thank you okay we're gonna move the camera now That's how that's going to work, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing but the well, best for our this U.S. Is, this is family. like that, that web show on Saturday Night Live, the two guys in the college dorm. Exactly. <laughs>
Hey, Gobi, hooray. Right. <laughs> so anyway, we got a lot of other stuff coming up tonight. We have a number of other guests that are going to join us. We have a giveaway, too. That's right, we do. To, We're to two give very some special away. guests. That's right, if they're still here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, people have been leaving left and right. And yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully if, I, if I look at the monitor here, let's see how many people we still have on who, are, who have stuck around and watched us online. All of you, uh, actually, you can see who, who's with us joining us the show tonight. Uh, Thank you, TrumpetGuy99, my dad. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Diane Merritt. Thanks, Mike Chaudhry. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Everybody say hello to Diane. Hi, Diane. <laughs> yeah. Pat. Yeah, Pat. Pat's Arlene, there. Peter. Who else is in there? Our loyal hardcore fans. The, the only reason they're watching on chat right now is because they couldn't be here. Otherwise, they would have been otherwise, here. Otherwise, yeah. So, you know, it's, it, 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 they want to see all their friends here. So, I, so everybody can wave again. Everybody say hello to all our audience. Hold Clifford it really and here. Doug. Hold it. You got to hold it real still. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm a little. All right, well, let, let's, let's talk to a few people here while, we're, while we have the opportunity. Hold it steady, hold it steady. Steady, steady. Go. Chuck Davis. No, you can stay there, stick right down. Uh, somebody does not want to be on camera. That, that was my dear wife, Kate. Yes. And Kate did not want to be on camera, so, well, anyway. <laughs> my, my wife's the same way, she's like, Go play with your friends. Yeah, I, I left her back in Buffalo. That's been the, the pretty much the deal all weekend long. Uh, I'm down here at Fafcon, uh, you know, going to all the seminar, seminars that we all went to, and and she's uh, patiently waiting and uh, doing a lot of shopping. It's a lot of good shopping here. Lots of beachwear. Yeah, well, that, that and uh, uh, stuff that is going to make my suitcase a lot heavier on the way home. <laughs> I hate when that happens. What what attracts you to Fafcon? This is your second. What what attracted you? Uh, well, first of all, the community. You know, uh, getting together with all the VOBB crowd, and uh, and then just the information exchange. You come away, as you well know, with so much new stuff. Every Fafcon, uh, the, there are you know the golden nuggets, as we call them. Uh, just these pearls of wisdom that you will bring home and you will put into practice in your business uh, that will uh, that will work for you. Trust me, you know I, I'm living proof. Uh, you know, since my first Fafcon, it's really helped me to uh, change my game, uh, you know, change my marketing outlook, my performance, um, just just the way I interact with clients. Thank you very much, Bob Sauer. Uh, it's uh, it's a great thing. And uh, I will be, uh, will be seeing you uh, in Charlotte. In Charlotte. Very good. Chuck, always a pleasure to see you. We see you online all the time. Fran McClellan. Thanks, Chuck. I'm not skipping anybody. Fran, welcome back to FAFCO. Thank you. Having, having a great time this time? Awesome, as always. What, what's been your, your golden nugget, if you're willing to share that? There were several. Um, I don't really have a list this time other than a feeling of, you know, be brave, it's okay, uh, you can get to the next level, and uh, just need to let go of your fears that are really rather silly, and just do it. It's always our fears that hold us back more than anything else, and it's, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's just great. All our friends are here. This is the, the best thing I like about Fafcon. And, you know, we're, we're friends and we remain friends afterwards and we communicate with each other because I get your emails every day saying my twisted wave doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's, let's talk to Bruce here because Bruce has been a big guy. Aside from being a big guy. Okay, see if, see if you can hold that one up there. So you missed the last one, but you were in Atlanta. Uh, yes, I've been to three out of four. Went to the very first one, uh, helped them get it started in a way, at least mentally, and I've uh, enjoyed it very much. So, yeah. what, what was your what was your big takeaway this time? Uh, again, I came more for inspiration. I got a lot of little tiny nuggets adding up to one big one, which is uh, just thinking of every way possible to communicate with the outside world that they ought to talk to me about voiceover and finding the right paths to go. And it's a, it's. For those of us who are in the world of communication, it is amazing how hard it is to communicate with people saying, hey, why don't you hire me? 
And uh, but I got some really great nuggets. A gentleman named J.S. Gilbert out of San Francisco was here, gave me some great tips uh, in one of our sessions, and I really enjoyed learning from him. So I've got some great ideas to take home with me and try starting Monday. Yeah, there, were, there was a few people I had wanted to meet, and they and they were here. But I was real glad that you were here because I, I missed you last time around, and some of the some of the stuff we did with improv and. Yeah. Well, next time I come, we'll definitely do another acting class. I did that for the first two FAFCONs, and people loved it. A lot of us don't come from an acting background. We come from radio or some other area. And it's uh, kind of fun to stretch and have fun and act and be characters. And so those are very popular classes. We'll do them again next time. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Nice to see you. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick little break here (laughs) before everything breaks down again. And... uh, do you, ha- you have that queued up, George? You mean a commercial? Yeah. Yes, of course I have a commercial oh, queued okay. up right now. Well, we'll be right back after this message, so stay where you are. El Dorado Recording Services. Randy Thomas chiming in. This is Alex Verdi. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish I've got my travel kit, I got my source connect, I've got it all going on, thanks to you. Thanks, George. You make it easy. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to two characters that didn't have anything else better to do, Dan and George. Wow. 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 How many times have I blown my ears out with that sort of thing? <laughs> it's not perfect, but then again, we never are. Like we say, you guys come for the accidents. You like to see the mishaps. We got it on, though. This guy, George. It's the NASCAR of television. It is the NASCAR. And actually, in the next FAFCON is going to be at Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Perfect. What a, what a segue that is. In October, we're, we can't wait for that. Uh, you know, like we say, you people go to the, the car races not to see the race. They see people to see people crash. Exactly. And then the guy get out and wave and that sort of thing. <laughs> Anyway, we've got our next guest with us, a guy who we've, we've met many, many times, and he's, he lives just like right down the, the shoreline from me in Cleveland, Ohio, and a representative and expert on microphones. Let's give a big East-West Audio Body Shop welcome to Steve Savanu. <laughs> welcome. This is your first time on East-West Audio Body this Shop. This is my first time on the East-West Audio Body Shop. Wow. And if anybody deserves to be on it, you do. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, now you now you now you represent uh, Audio Technica, and you're talking into. I see that it is an Audio Technica 3035 microphone. Wow! Oh, a classic. <laughs> it is a classic. It's a great sounding mic. Though it's been replaced by the 2035. Right. Well, Audio Technica pitch there, but I won't, won't pitch. Yeah. Now, what do you do with Audio Technica? I am the director of educational services, so I do uh, training videos, I do product launches, I do training materials, I do seminars, I do workshops, uh, anything that has to do with education and, and that kind of creative stuff. It's kind of a neat position. Yeah. And when you did, you did a couple of sessions on microphones, did and people some were microphone testing sessions them out. here. We did a hands-on talk-out session and. Uh, uh, just a lot of participation, which is really a cool thing about uh, about doing this event. Yeah, there was a lot of technical stuff this time around. Usually, it's at Fafcon. It's a lot of performance and business oriented stuff. This time, we did a little bit more technical stuff, which is you know your yours and my uh, and yep. George's uh, background. But you know, without the technical stuff, if it wasn't for us, nobody would hear these guys. <laughs> That's true. true. That's true. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we work at it, you know. Somebody's got to do it, you know. Uh, now, what did, now, this Keep was your first fire. FAFCON. This is my first FAFCON. Now, you were here, and you participated in all the other things that were going on, so yes. you probably got a little bit different experience that you get than when you go to a conference well, or something. Well, you know, it's, what was really amazing is the whole crowdsourcing thing where we said, okay, here's how we're going to do the seminars. Right. And we let people pick things that they wanted to, wanted to discuss, 
And instead of it being some pre-picked thing where you're going to listen to some speaker that you might not really have any interest in what they really want to talk about because you had other things or questions that you wanted to have answered and you never got those questions answered. So the whole FAFCON experience was just tremendous in, in watching that all come to fruition on Friday night. Yeah, it was. It, it's it's been pretty amazing. We're glad you were here, though, because we've got a lot of people here that are not primarily voice actors. You do a little bit of narration for product. I do, I do some product narration for Audio Technica, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you, I'm really interested in the whole voiceover business because it sounds like it's a lot of fun, and people really seem to enjoy what they're doing. Yeah. Except this poor lady that's holding this light. It's she's like, it's she's it's like the Statue of Liberty with the. She torch. is well you compensated. Know. She's Hollywooding. <laughs> that's what we call it. It's no. either that or I feel like I'm like, I'm, okay, where were you on the night of the 24th? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's, let me, let me throw, throw a real curveball. Okay. At you. What's the next big thing in microphones? You know, it's really hard to say because we've got USB microphones. There's, there's companies that make digital output microphones. I mean, the fundamental thing of microphones hasn't really changed. I mean, it's a diaphragm. Uh, on a coil of wire, if it's a dynamic, it's a you know a, a two charge plates. If it's a condenser, or, or it's a piece of foil hung between a bag, if it's a ribbon, that technology doesn't change. Where I think you're going to see things change is things getting quieter, smaller, better performance, better price. Um, and I've seen some really cool things come out. Um, it's just that the technology keeps getting better and better, and it's and I think you'll see more digital things. Um, but it's it's really hard to say. I can't I can't wish I had that crystal ball because if I knew that it would be a great thing. Yeah. Do Do you know if if Audio Technica is going to try and get into the uh, the tablet market and and have uh, machinery to deal with that? Well, one of the things I'm taking back is having a, a coming up with a microphone that'll connect directly to not only a tablet but to an iPhone yeah. or a smartphone because that was a really neat way for somebody in the field to get out and really record something without having to do a lot of a lot of production setup and it's so interesting to see how this technology has evolved from what it used to take to do any type of recording I'm, I'm an old real to real guy I, I edited with me, a razor blade and I've got the scars to prove it and now we're doing so many things on the iPad, we're doing things on the computer, and it's almost like the laptop's passe because I can do it on the iPad and it doesn't make any noise. Yeah, I, it's, and that's, we, George and I firmly believe that within two years, everybody's going to be doing all their voice work on an iPad. I, I wouldn't be surprised, or some other device like that. Yeah. But the microphone itself probably won't change much other than the how the microphone interfaces to the recording device. Right. You know, right now everybody's familiar with the XLR connector going into a box, and the box goes into, well, then we migrated to the USB microphone where it plugs directly into a USB port or right. through a, a camera adapter, and now I've, I'm seeing technology where the microphone is designed to plug right into the iPad iPad or the iPhone, and we're, we're getting rid of all those little inter-between things, and that's what I think is really kind of cool. Yeah. Well, Steve, I, I, was, I was thrilled to hear that you were coming, and it was great to see you, and those pants as usual. You have to see this guy's pants. They're skin tight. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we, we don't need to hear everything. You know, when you turn 50, you do something crazy, so I have the rocker look. I, I grew a handlebar mustache. He went for the, the, the tight pants. That's right. Steve, thanks so much for being here. It was fun, it was fun hanging out with you this weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All righty. Well, I think it's time to take a few questions from the audience. I mean, everybody is always having uh, technical issues of some sort. And, you know, for, for a long time, we were... Okay, he's got it. All right. See, this is, this is a two-man crew. This, the one thing that I think we've learned from, from this experience is that you can't do this stuff alone. And, I, I mean, aside from the fact that we're all... You know, we're here working together, and, and voice actors can't do it alone. Doing any type of a production like this, we can't do this by ourselves. I mean, we really need each other to make it happen. And I know. that's a it's, good metaphor in that. It's so easy, to, to, it's so easy for us to go, go it alone because uh, you start out alone, you know? So you, it's hard to adapt to having a team. Yeah. It's hard to adapt to working in groups, it's hard to adapt to uh, being flexible. And, and, uh, and that, that's been a learning curve for me. I always try to go it alone. I try to do everything myself. And learning when it's time to hire other people, outsource, virtual assistants, uh, 
hire a bookkeeper. You know, that's all. Those yeah. are all. Those are some of the valuable lessons that I've been gathering from this. So, yeah. Yeah. well, does anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Anybody have a technical question, a home studio question that they'd like answered? Right off the top of your head, something you've always wanted to know and think that George and I could probably answer. Come on, don't be shy. You have it. Mara. Let's see if we can get her on camera here. And Headphones versus monitors. I'm glad we got Steven here on this one, too. I, I would be glad to help and, and throw some comments in on that because I can talk about headphones. Go for oh, okay. it. You're I, on. I, I, I we, we, we have our opinions, too. But If you're going to monitor with headphones, you need to find headphones that are studio monitor type that have a flat, uncolored response. If you go out and you buy some of the fashion forward headphones that everyone's wearing, I won't mention any names, but uh, um, there, there starts are starts with fashion B, ends forward, with E. Yeah, <laughs> starts with the ends with a T. Those headphones are probably going to have coloration in them, and that coloration is going to basically color the sound. It may give you, it may appear that you've got more bass in your voice or or something else, which you then compensate with with your equalization and other tools in your DAW, then when it gets to the client, it's like, man, it sounds like a tin horn in a warehouse because the headphones had so much bass, you rolled it off. So what we recommend is a studio monitor type headphone. And I, I mean, I, I know a couple of model numbers, I won't mention any, but the M50s are really, really popular. In fact, very popular. Yeah. And they are, they are, a lot of guys have mixed there's been some major engineers that have mixed some projects on these M50 headphones. Hmm. So if you're going to use phones, it, it definitely need to be a studio monitor phone versus a, call it fashion high fidelity headphone. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to make a difference? You know, it's Something marketing. Says it's, an HD, it's a gimmick. It's like yeah, HD radio. Digital headphones? Digital or HD headphones. headphones? Well, HD and digital all sounds like marketing hype. Yeah. Um, we should put more on that chair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's another point. There's noise canceling headphones with the active noise canceling circuitry in them. Again, what that's doing is it's taking away some of the low frequency sound, i.e., you know, 200 hertz and things of that nature, which is right at the low end of the voice range. So if you turn on your active noise canceling headphones, you might not hear something that's going to be tracked in the uh, in the recording. So. Be aware of those. The best thing is a good studio reference headphone. With no HD in it. No, no HD. That's a marketing thing. Love it. Yeah, we, we, we tend to think of that stuff as a lot of marketing hype, like glowing tubes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorites. Oh, they put a light behind it to make the tube look even brighter. What are your thoughts, George? Yeah, I, I, I use headphones a lot because I have to be really analytical in what I do. So I have to really pay attention to the tiniest, tiniest details. And unfortunately, uh, I don't have a perfect listening space to work in. I, why do we have even less light now? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so we, uh, I, I use monitors for ana analytical listening, where it's like under a magnifying glass kind of listening, because that's mostly what I do. I do a lot of just, I want to hear the absolute smallest you know, detail. If I had a studio in which to work, I would be much more likely to use uh, control monitors for most of what I'm doing because um, I need a but you have to have a really quiet room so that you can tell what is live and what's Memorex what's it going to commercial you don't know if it's really in the room live while you're listening back or whether it's on the playback so it's really hard to distinguish the, the noise problems that you're trying to figure out so that's that's what it, that's how I look at it, and uh, that's a great 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 question. Yeah, well, we can we can ask that one a lot, and, and everybody knows my opinion on this because I you know I'm a studio monitor kind of guy. Yeah, and uh, probably because I don't hear too well. I, I, I need I need the volume. You know, in 20 years in radio, I set up a lot of feedback loops and blew out a lot of eardrums. Exactly. So what's which is explains to my wife why you don't hear me when you're calling me up for dinner from the studio. <laughs> but I can hear noise floor like you wouldn't believe. 
using a good pair of studio monitors. I just believe they've got more power as near field monitors and they, and they work much better. Do we have any other questions? Kelly, Kelly Buttrick. Turn that camera around. Will do. Okay. Okay. I live in Georgia. We know you live in Georgia. Yes. And my studio is at the top of my house. Yes. There's an attic above me. There's uh, open attic space next to me. My studio, since I added an iMac to the studio rather than using my MacBook, has become really, really, really hot. And um, I'm wondering if there's a, a cheap or effective, quiet way of keeping myself cool. I don't know if there's any kind of silent fans or do I need to actually get AC installed and different, you there's, know. There's no ventilation up there at all? Not in my studio. Okay. Now in the room, so what I do is I go in and I record and I do my session. And then as soon as it's done, then I open the door and everything's fine and it cools off. But for that moment, I am hot as... Yeah. You yeah. know what. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, and that's a very, very common problem when, when you build you know, an enclosed booth. I mean, in some places, it's an absolute necessity to have that because there's noise in the house and, you know, planes going overhead and you have to have that dead silence. When that happens... You're, you're putting yourself in a cube and there's no air circuit, it's going to get hot. Right. Especially in Georgia. Yes, in the summer. In the summer. It can get like that in the winter, too. Yeah. So there, there are some special baffles that are built for it. None of this stuff is, is, is inexpensive. It's not something you're going to be able to custom fix. You know, so there's that no way. like silent fan I can clip there, onto my stand. Well, the, the, well my they, stand. they all have fans. Now there are some brushless motor fans that I think are, are pretty are pretty quiet, but you can't really use them while you're recording. I, one of the things I was thinking about is having a remote switch, so when you record, you can you can you know you turn it off. Oh. Yeah, that's that's I'm what actually, they do with whisper rooms. They give you a fan and a remote switch. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's really the best way to do that. And uh, so. The best thing is is either the expensive way, or you do the redneck oh, way. Yeah, I open the I door. Georgia. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great question. All right. Do we have any other questions, Mara? I think she should just take the seat here. Come here, Mara. Come on, come on. Come on. Get up here. Sit down. Come on. All right. Please sit down for my arms. Yeah, you, you, you get the actual guest chair this time. We wanted to talk to you anyway. <laughs> we, we, had, we had dinner with Mara last night, and we know her very well anyway. And uh, let's see here, get, the, get us in the shot here. Um, what was it we wanted to ask her? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's the world of voiceover in New Orleans? Where yeah, you really, you're from New Orleans. You know what? Surprisingly, I don't do much local work, and I'm hoping that that's going to be changing soon. Um, I, I find that I, I rely more on phone patch and ISDN and, and Source Connect, and even though New Orleans uh, is becoming a Hollywood South as far as movie production is concerned, I don't do a lot of work at home, surprisingly. You do work at home, but it's remote work. Right, you, you right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I work at home, but not for home. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 What's, what's, what are you working on right now? Well, um, actually, I'm the primary vo internal voice for AT&T, so um, I'm working on a, a, an interesting project right now. I'm going to be actually going back up there. Uh, I, I'm sorry, up there as, as far as New Jersey, where um, AT&T Labs is, uh, spending about three months in a closed quarter, losing my mind. Um, trying, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm on the spot. Sorry, the lights. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's what I'm working on right now. The AT and T projects. Now you had a question for us. I, I not, not many people get to sit in the East West Audio Body <laughs> Shop hot seat <laughs> and try and stump the chumps here. <laughs> it's not a chumps. life or death thing. It's just as as you know, I'm an obsessive audiophile, and yeah, I'm always curious as to how these things work. And I have the. Um, monitor pads those Oralex monitor pads and I don't get what the deal is with that. what makes it work what makes it is it the height is it the materials it's what what is the point how does it affect the actual speakers and why is it so important as it's a changing the the sound into being something more accurate to monitor I, I will defer Left. to my partner here <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the, I like to answer the geekiest of the geeky questions 
Um, basically, uh, what happens is the, the studio monitor cabinet is uh, the cheaper and lighter weight the speakers are, the more the cabinet resonates. And so the cabinet resonates, and then whatever it's sitting on resonates. So it turns the whole table or whatever the speakers are sitting on into part of the speaker. Your coffee cup starts to rattle. Right, right. but they were never designed to do that. You want to hear only the speaker driver and nothing else. So they help isolate the speaker from the table they're sitting on. Okay. They also help the mopads let you do angles. So you can put, if they're too low, you can angle the speakers up toward you so that the tweeters are pointed as close, you know, directly to your ears as possible. Okay, I wasn't sure high, what to do with that. I was like, should I tilt them up? Should I tilt them down? Should they, I just keep them facing they, me? Just think of them as like two cameras shooting at you. And you want, you want the lens, the tweeter is the lens of the camera, and you want it to be looking right at you. And that's, oh. that's, that's kind of how you want to think of it. And you can tilt them up if they're too low. You can tilt them down if they're too high. And that, so they sort of serve, serve double duty. Wow. And that will cure you of your headphone habit. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. All right. Thanks for being Thank with you, us. Thank so you guys. Always a pleasure. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, perhaps we should take another break here. Yes, we should. We've got, we've got to find Amy wherever she's hiding. And uh, so we can talk a little bit more about FAFCON. We're live from FAFCON. This is the first time we did it live. We had a, we had a tape it last time in Hershey. But this time we're actually live and went through all the rigmarole to get it done. <laughs> you man. Gosh, you, you packed believe. a lot of stuff. Well, when I picked you up in Santa Monica the other day, it was <laughs> like, dude, I, I, we're going to need another boat. <laughs> it was, <laughs> Tell me about it. It was a, lot, it was a <laughs> lot of stuff. Anyway, we'll be right back. So everybody back at home and everybody right here, stay right where you are. We'll be right back on East West Audio Body Shop. West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Two guys I love spending Sunday nights with. We are back. Are we? We're back. Yes, we are. All right. We're having too much fun here. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if, if it's possible, I mean, we have fun doing this show anyway. But this is a special treat that we can we can do it live on you know together more than anything else. So, uh, but the best part about it is meeting friends who are our friends, and I mean truly friends, people we know online, people we, you know, people who we've, we've read their blogs, we find them on the forums, and they have them. fascinating things to say, <laughs> important, meaningful things to say, you know, about our industry, and that's who our next guest is, somebody I think everybody's familiar with. Let's give a East-West Audio Body Shop welcome to J.S. Gilbert. Yeah, J.S. Thank you. Thank you. We are so glad that you're here with us. I was surprised to see you joining us at this particular event, and I was thrilled because I've always wanted to sit down and talk with you, and I got the chance. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people today who are going, and the Grinch's heart grew five times bigger at Fafcon. So, uh, that's, that's what I've been hearing anyway. I, I actually shed a tear. Well, it wasn't until Amy Snively had cried for the 37th time that I actually shed a tear, but she has that effect on people. Yeah. What have, what have you been getting out of it? Now, were you, were you, you, is this something you might not normally go to, but you're here, and what have you gotten out of it? Well, uh, you know why I went to this? Because of the whole concept thing. I mean, the fact is is that um, this, this is sort of an atmosphere where uh, it is... 
it is people who are, are stumbling around in the dark in, in some areas and other people who have really uh, a lot of things to contribute in other areas. Um, but it's avoiding the, the, the hawkers, the people who are out there with stuff to sell and all that. It's just people really who are, who are trying to help out of uh, the goodness of their heart and other people who are saying, well, I, I, I also want to suck as much information up as I can. Yeah. So um, this, this was a, a, a business when I got into it where you know we got together and the best part was hanging out with the actors. And I remember one time that I was at an audition. It was running so late. It was like an hour and a half late. And everybody in the room started doing Walter Brennan impersonations, and we were just <laughs> laughing and having a good time. And and now you know you just you're you're in your own studio, and you you wonder you know what are those people doing, and what and and so uh, you, you you're kind of in a vacuum. So you come to something like this, and you try to find the camaraderie, and and you know hey, do, are you do, is this happening with you or? Uh, and I don't think it really matters too much, you know, what stage of your career you're in. Because us guys that have been doing it for a long time, we just get together and go, you know, when I was younger, we used to crank up the computers by hand and we made millions of dollars by noon and then took a nap. And yeah, But it's never going to be that way again. So, you know, you either, either lead, follow, or get out of the way. So, uh, and I did a little of all three this weekend. Yeah. Make any friends? I, I, I think a few friends. So uh, uh, people, people have been saying, they've been coming up to me and saying, you know, you're a, a, a little bit nicer than I thought you were. <laughs> so, and, uh, and there are other people who shook my hand and afterwards didn't actually look down to make sure they still had their watches and rings. So, uh, you know, that was a good thing. So are you, you, you work a lot. Uh, you've, been, you've, had, you've had some issues lately, but I'm uh, glad you're, you're here with us and uh, you took the time. And I know it's been tiring for you. And uh, but what kind of kind of stuff have you been doing lately? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I'm kind of uh, I, I work across the board. I do uh, I do a lot of commercial work. I do e-learning. Uh, I do video games. Um, you know, I'll tell you one thing. I, I think why I maybe have survived this long is because my motto has never been to say never. So uh, I look at it on a daily basis. Like today, for example, I got up, I read the obituary, my name wasn't in it. I figured it'd be a pretty it's a good, good day. day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's just to I, to be open as much as you possibly can. Life is about a dialogue. It's about being part of the story. Um, I don't give points to people for just showing up. Showing up is is easy to do. You show up, you participate, you give, and. Um, you know, so the one thing I can tell you is most of the people that are here are people I really haven't, um, I haven't given, I haven't given them a hard time online because I didn't like them or love them. I gave them a hard time because I thought maybe they were buying into somebody else's BS. Uh, I thought maybe giving them a hard time might might help push them in in a direction not to think the way that I do, but to think the way that they should think on their own independently. Um, you know, come to some com conclusions. Uh, don't buy into the whole unicorn and everything else that's going on online. And it's not just our industry. I mean, everyone out there right now, for the most part, is having difficulties, regardless of who they are. Um, I have a friend, uh, he's a, a brilliant, brilliant writer. He's written some of the best advertising campaigns there are. And he's 63 years old, and he's, he's driving a, um, a shuttle, in, a, a, the airport shuttle in New York. I mean, that's what he needs to do. It doesn't mean he's not trying to write and trying to get gigs and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I ask people, persevere, but the nice thing about banging your head against the wall is stopping. That doesn't necessarily mean stopping a voiceover career. It maybe means stopping doing the things that aren't working for you. Yeah. Well, let me ask you one last thing here. We got lots of people want to want to are, are here watching the show. A couple people, a couple other people want to get on, but. Sure. What did you get out of this? What's what was the one real golden nugget that, you know, because I know you're a vastly experienced person, and what was something that you really got? Um, I mean, on a personal level, I, I think what I got out of it was that um, I, I tend to be really way too judgmental, and that's just a personal kind of thing. I no, you're I not. said I said I came in here really without any expectations, and I realized that this this morning that I was judging people and I had expectations and stuff. And I the times that I cleared that out of my head, 
you know, and, and, and wasn't working from that, that place of insecurity or ego or whatever, I could really appreciate the people that were here. I could appreciate what they had to say. And I could say to myself, I can learn from all these people. So that's really what I think I got, um, it, you know, um, to, to maybe have more respect for, for, what was it that Amy said? She uh, said, it's okay to, uh, to disagree, but don't, uh, what, what did she say exactly? Do you remember? Different experience, right? So, no, so, so, just to say, my experience has been different than yours. So, um, there's a an individual here I respect a lot, and he has a totally different process. In fact, one that I've I've kind of like you know for for years has said I don't think that's good that talent should do that, but I respect him a lot. So I'm going to go home and 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 try to experience what his process is. Yeah, so that I can be in a place to, you know, to better understand it. It may not work for me, but I may get a better understanding of how it could work for other people. Yeah. We got we got a question from our from our our chat room audience. There are actually people watching this show, and we know you've watched before, so they're they're in our chat room. Uh, question was, what was your what was your session about? My session was about um, advocacy, and my belief is um, there has never been a greater time when you it, when it's been about not what you know but who you know so what I tried to do is to talk to people about not so much being voice talent but being interesting people who are interested in others being part of the dialogue going out there and saying and making friends and so you get to a situation where the people who are out there who are making the decisions of who to hire want to hire you they've learned enough about you they've experienced it and one of the things I see a lot of actors doing, especially like in Facebook or whatever, you know, it's what I call the seven-year-old syndrome. It's like, hey, daddy, daddy, look at me. Look what I can do. Um, and it's all great and well. Uh, and I tell that joke about the, you know, this guy comes home and he finds his wife in bed with his best friend who's an actor. And he says, oh, my God, what are you doing? And the guy says, uh, well, I, I just got a Del Monte commercial and I got a call back for Days of Our Lives. And. So it's just maybe maybe we need to be a little less uh, about being actors and a little bit more about being human beings and, and um, you know, and interfacing on that sort of level. So uh, right now, if you think about it this way, almost anybody in this world could possibly be a consumer for voiceover services on some sort of a level or not. So when you think about it that way, do you really need to interact or or even have the dialogue be about voiceover? Because it'll happen. What what what's keeping voice actors from uh, being truly professional, in your opinion? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things, but if you can name like maybe one or two big top top things. I think probably uh, a lot of the voice actors are getting into this without um, a business acumen. Um, I, I see a lot of voice actors that get into it and uh, online it's very interesting you hear people talk about mistrust of the clients and I wouldn't work with anybody unless they paid me 50% up front and da 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 and da 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 and uh, th these kinds of aspects you know go out there and and uh, how many people that want to work doing commercials uh, don't have never read Ad, Ad Week or Ad Age or, or visited websites. They don't know the names of the advertising agencies or, or the work or the processes or things like that. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's like you wouldn't go, you wouldn't jump off a diving board into a pool if you didn't understand, you know, what it was like to be in the water and swimming and so on and so forth. So learn about these people and you can relate to them on another level. I, uh, I, I love animals better than I love people. So I, uh, I give leashes out to folks that in the business that have dogs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that, that's fine. We talk about dogs and stuff and then they hire me to do voiceover. That's great. Are there any other questions? That's the that's what I got from the chat room. The chat room. Uh, JS, I've been waiting. It's we met a few years ago, but it was a pleasure yeah, to actually really sit down and talk with you, JS yeah. Gilbert. Thank you. Su support these guys. I, I don't. They don't. I don't think they're making any money doing this. So buy buy stuff from the sponsors or whatever, and yes. that way at least the people the people will know they're listening and what have you. Because it's kind of nice having this show. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. JS is awesome. Beautiful. Nice pan. Oh, thank you. That was a nice pan. <laughs> now you got now you got to fit in. And that, what what a perfect segue there. Uh, you know, we haven't we haven't talked about the East West Audio Body Shop 
shop, shop lately. No, we haven't. And we, 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 what's the address for that? It is EWAB. Oh, I'm sorry. It's shop.ewabs.com. Shop.ewabs.com. You know, we've got mouse pads. Mouse and, pads. And we have uh, laptop uh, bags. Laptop bags. You like this is our, our classy uh, logo behind us here. This is our classy logo behind us here. <laughs> it's sort of rather representative of the way we get yeah, things it's done actually, around here. It's actually arranged properly right now. Isn't that amazing? Does anybody ever know? Does anybody make take note of the fact that on our logo, Dan's on the left and George is on the right? I thought that was just a little ironic. Well, now it's right. <laughs> Yeah, usually exactly. I'm on the other side. I know. <laughs> Maybe we should change seats. Exactly. Anyway, so e-web, if, e- a shop.ewabs.com. There's mouse pads, uh, mug, you know, your typical mugs, shirts, t-shirts, organic hats. cotton, organic cotton shirts, yeah. uh, hats. So if you, if you want an East West Audio Body Shop coffee mug, which is the best way to start the day, you can go on over there and that, you know, and it helps us and it gives you a good mug. Exactly. So, it gives anyway. you a good mugging. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we'd like to get our next guest on. Are they about? Yeah, <laughs> there she is. There she is. Somebody who I think everybody in this room is just glowing about and, and someone who's glowing herself because she makes this all possible. And let's give another East West Audio Shop Body Shop welcome to Amy Snively. <laughs> We've been wanting you on for so long, but you're just so damn yeah. busy. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. You really should talk to my um, my agent. They're very particular. I don't usually go on a show like this unless I have a movie coming out. <laughs> what was the genesis of this? What possessed you to totally ruin your life and, and put this together? Well, uh, there were a lot of um, voiceover friends. We were um, We were talking about how... Uh, how much it means to us when we get together and uh, how much we learn just from each other. And I have always been a firm believer that at any time that you go to an educational event, there's more knowledge in the room than there is behind the podium. And I found that that was really true just sort of sitting around eating submarine sandwiches with pals. And we wanted to find a way to get together. It started very small. There was a group of people who we just want to see each other every year. I wish there was some way to do it. Um, and then the, um, my husband goes to um, an unconference, had gone to a few unconferences in his industry, and it suddenly dawned on me that this format with some minor modifications would work for this group. And um, as it turns out, that was true, and I'm very grateful for it because um, I, this has just been the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. How long does it take to plan something like this? And I know you're, it consumes you, and, and right. you're still a full-time voice actress. Yes. And what does it take? Uh, it's um, intensely four months, uh, and then even more intensely, um, it gets increasingly in- intense with every 30-day increment. So there's, there are milestones at four months out, nine months out, you know, I'm sorry, uh, 90 days out, 30 days, uh, 60 days out, 30 days out. So, but four months is when it really kicks into gear. But that having been said, of course, um, the in order to be able to announce the location on the final day of, of this FAFCON, you know that um, my contracting phase with my with FAFCON 5 ended over six months ago. So there's all this lead time. So wow. I'm always planning three of them. They're at different stages. So <laughs> right now we're in the, the request for pro- proposal stage with the Convention and Visitors Bureaus for the cities that are competing for us for FAFCON 6. I'm in the menu choosing stage and the website modification stage for FAFCON 5, and then we're wrapping FAFCON 4. So there's always, it's always in the pipeline. Wow, that's, that's, that's quite an operation. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's make it, it has to really, how do you keep it all in your head? That's, that's you don't, amazing. you can't keep it in your head. Yeah. You, there's, there's no way to do it. No. There's, I have a, a lot of a software that supports it, so there's just there's no way to keep it in your head. It would be physically impossible. There's no, not that much room in my head. Yeah. Yeah, like, like George and I said, it's, you can't do it alone. And, and you've got yeah. a lot of help, don't you? Oh, my heavens. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't want to even attempt to try to do it on my own, but I it is actually physically impossible. Alone, yeah. uh, the, um, this time we tried to do th- things a little bit differently. We've always had volunteers who have helped us, and this time because we wanted to, uh, we have uh, you know, multiple initiatives in play, um, one of which is uh, now that we have established the FAFCON Works, right, 
and we've got enough of them each one of them a little bit more uh, refining the process a little bit more. We're taking this giant leap right now in automating as much as possible and making it easier and more sustainable, less of a burden on the volunteer staff. Even I am a volunteer staffer, of course. Uh, you know, so uh, because of that, there's just a huge amount of intensity. So we actually put together what we call the super squad and an actual real, this was our first Falcom with an actual real staff with weekly stand-up stand um, status meetings and everything. So we really ran this like a business this time, you know, but or like a, you know, <laughs> Something close to it. Yeah, so we, but the nice thing is, is we're all still friends at the end, so yay! Oh, that's good. That was the most important thing and probably the most surprising. Yeah. What do you get out of it? Oh, just piles of money, you know, I mean, it just, um, <laughs> This is really my primary source of income. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know. Uh, I, um, I'm, I, I knew where you were going with that. I actually, the thing that I get out of it is, um, well, I don't know, just how vulnerable do you want me to get about this? Um, well, there's, there's millions of people watching, so... Uh, I get nothing. Well, the thing is, is that I'm one of those people who will buy a ticket to a networking mixer, and then when it's time to go, I don't screw up the nerve to go. Um, and so FAFCON is a way for me to, um, to connect with people and stay connected with people with the accountability to know that I can't, I can't chicken out. Because um, if I don't show up, people will be very, very, very mad uh, because they will want to know, want their money back. So uh, there's that very motivating thing there. But it, that's basically for me, it's the um, connectedness with people. Um, I enjoy success in this industry and I'm grateful for it. I think the fact that we can wake up in the morning and we speak into microphones and people give us money is something, despite the fact that it's obviously harder than that simplified version. Yeah. I, I mean, but I feel really, really grateful for that. Um, and uh, I want to connect with these people now. And, and here's the thing is that there, there's so much out there for people who are interested in getting into this business or people who are on like a career exploration mission and, or just want to do it sort of uh, as a hobby. It'll be a fun thing to go to an improv class or a voiceover class or whatever. But don't you think that, it, that, that this particular population of the working voiceover pros, the people who get up, speak into the microphone, for strangers and are paid actual, real, spendable money. These people have been so underserved for way too long, you know? And in any time I would sign up for something, it seemed like that even when I would sign up for a really advanced class, they, they would fill the seats with people who were, you know, willing to pay money and I, it was never advanced. Right. And it's, it's people who really want more or are trying to get information from other people as opposed to sharing all the information they know. Yeah. And I knew that if we could come up with it a way of a, a, just a lightly structured event where people could have a little bit more self-determination and connect with each other and exchange information, that, that we would be a, a more appropriate and more relevant and more... Um, and more likely to really help us all get better at this and make more money doing it. Because I really truly do believe that a rising tide lifts all boats. And I really wanted to be a part of rising that tide. Well, we're blessed that you did it. Amen. Absolutely best. Thank you. I, you know, it, it's, it's been a, a wonderful experience for you know the three times I've been here. Well, we dragged George along Finally. this time. Finally here, and so it, good to have him here. Yeah, it's we, we've we've learned so much, and we mostly we learn about ourselves, which is the most important thing, and and we have you to thank for it, and we oh. really we really do appreciate it, and thank and, you. We, and we and I think everybody here understands you know what you go through to make this happen, but it's worth it, and the fact that you do it twice a year, we like even more. Well, just so you know. It, the first four FAFCON events were sort of compressed because it's what I called a, um, a launch sequence. I right. was afraid that it would take us too long with an annual event to reach enough of the right people because the people are what makes this awesome. Uh, and so... Um, <laughs> you, you, you are a rock as a matter Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then there were so many more people who wanted to come to FAFCON than we actually had spots. And because of that, I did succumb to pressure to actually have one more at that six-month increment. So we're having FAFCON 5 in October. Uh, but then it really, really is going to be an annual event. 
So, you no. know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was, so we'll be getting together once a year yeah. after that. Well, but it's, it's been worth it, and it worked. Thank because you. you you really made it happen. Amy, thank you so much for doing this thank and thanks you. for coming on the show. Oh, we're going to have you on again. You know, when we when we're ready to when you're ready to launch, uh, you know, registration for the next one and we're all lined up like we're <laughs> trying to get a good seat on Southwest Airlines 24 hours before we people were, were you, how many of you set your alarms? To make sure that you could get registered for the next one. I was one. so shocked when I went out to get my paper and found all those voiceover people in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, I'll, um, I'll announce, I'll give you guys plenty of notices where we're going to actually launch registration. We're, we're making some software changes to make it a little bit smooth for, smoother for everybody, but then I'll, um, I'll give it, send up a flare. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have you on right before then, That'd too. That would be great. I'd love that. Amy, love that thank you much. so much for thank being you, here. Oh, it was, it was we, we got a big hug. Thank you. All righty. Amy Snively. All right. Let's do, let's do a real brief break, and then we'll come back, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about our good friend, Harlan Hogan. Harlan Hogan, that's right. We're just going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to Dan and George. And we're and back. back. And we're back. And we're All back. Right. And East we're West back. Audio Body Shop. You'll have to. Well, one of the people that makes it happen, sit right there with Linda there. One of the things that makes this show happen is our sponsors and one of our, our favorite people the guy who makes it happen in the voiceover industry for those of us looking for things that have been perfectly selected for what we do is our good friend Harlan Hogan and his fantastic website, VoiceOverEssentials.com. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Harlan's built a website that is just, he's instead of expanding it and making it bigger and adding more and more junk, he actually went the other way. He had a lot more stuff before, and then he uh, honed it down to, to really laser focus in on stuff that really is relevant That's and right. the best gear that is out there for voiceover actors. Yeah, and he, he makes it easy for you. And all you have yeah. to do is go over to voiceoveressentials.com and look, you know, look at all the stuff he has, the Portabooth Pro, the, v, the VO1A. It's a great name for a microphone, actually. It, it sounds is. like it's sort of like the old Electrovoice V1 you uh, know, but I, I, I keep confusing it that. Yeah, an old velo uh, Velocity ribbon mic. Now we got to wait but for the VO2A or the VO1B. I wonder what he's gonna, when he's going to do that. If he does, you'll hear about it on our show. That's right. We'll be the first so ones to talk about we it. We want to thank Harlan for, for his support of our show. and uh, He's been there since the early days. The of early the days. So voiceoveressentials.com. You go there. You will find what you need. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Harlan. Thank you so much. All right. And we're back one more time. We all back. It's a, it's a it's a miracle that we got it on this time. It is. <laughs> More of a miracle than normal. So it was a super miracle. You you I actually started to see you sweat, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is something I don't actually get to see from twenty five hundred miles away. Uh, or anyway, smell. <laughs> that's that's true. Well, we have two special guests right now because one of the things that we really like about Fafcon is that people call come from far and wide far 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 and wide and uh, we, we wanted to uh, recognize two people who came the farthest to uh, FAFCON uh, welcome to East West Audio Body Shop Linda Joy and Andy Curtis Andy Andrew came Curtis from farther away he came from a little farther away yeah. Andrew, where'd you come oh, from? The Savoa roster, and, I, and I've heard you before. And there we were on a whale watch the other day. And she introduces herself. And where did where did you, where how far did you come to be here? Well, actually, I, I came from from the United States okay. this time. Okay. That but helps. originally, I'm from England, and most I of my tell. work because I'm bilingual. 
<laughs> um, most of my work was done in Germany. Mm-hmm. So, but now I work in in actually Colorado. So it's oh. not that far. Oh, okay. So you're no. really not that far. Around the corner. So, my misunderstanding. So bilingual, as in Pom and America. Ex- n- well, no German. Oh, and, yes. Okay. So really and trilingual. English. Trilingual. Trilingual, if so, you so will. Pom- yes, yes. Right. Pommy American and real English. Right? Real English and German. That's true. How would you say East West Audio Body Shop in German? Ost West um, um, Audio um, Werkstatt. There you go. Ost West Audio Werkstatt. We need to get us. We need to get that recorded. We'll call Linda and get us. We'll get a drop yes. later. <laughs> yeah. What did you? What have you gotten out of this? Oh, oh, I got to talk finally. I always say I work in this padded room all by myself and finally meet people I've, I've never met this many people in the United States. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I, I've, I've made friends. I've gained knowledge. I, it's, it's been amazing. Really. What, what, what's the most important thing you've taken away? Something that you didn't expect? Something that I didn't expect. Everything. I, I don't know if I expected anything. I mean, it has been so organized and, and the warmth. And you can just go up to anybody and ask them a question. And if they can't answer it, you go to the next. And um, Somebody's got the answer. Somebody's got the answer. But the fact that we were told to leave our egos at the door was yes, just fantastic, was a good it? one. There really yes. wasn't anyone here yeah. that was yeah. creating such a barrier yes. to dealing with the, the questions we had. Yeah. You know, we really could just get out there and ask the question, which is just totally unlike normal uh, normal conferences, yes. I believe. Yes. And not to mention the, the uh, karaoke last night. Yeah. Most of us have lost our voices. So, <laughs> but, you know. I avoided the karaoke this you time. You did well, yeah. Dan. I, I was <laughs> did well. Yeah. smart to do yeah. that. I, I do have to yeah. talk for a little. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the wonderful thing was that... Um, we could lead our own sessions as we wanted to. For instance, for me, I knew that there would be a lot of bilingual and international voice artists here. And so I'm a first-time faffer. On the first day, the first session, I led my first discussion, I thought, well, before I chicken out. And it was it was just wonderful. I had some bullet points, and really then everybody pitched in and it was just really great because a, a lot of us have the same kind of issues working in two different languages or you know connecting online all of those things that we deal with in everyday life and, and it's a big help well for being the people that have come the farthest to come to FAFCON and to be on East West Audio Body Show. <laughs> We have a special gift for both of you. George, tell them what they've won. Hey. Well, these are uh, these are ultra pods, oh, wow. curti- ultra pods, courtesy of Eldorado Recording Services. And uh, what's so great about these things is they make awesome tripods for cameras, but Bye. also really great mic stands. Yeah. And so, you, not only do you get the tripods, you get the special little adapters that you thread onto them so that you can use them as proper mic stands. And uh, if you haven't tried these things out yet, they don't look like much in the package, but uh, they really are fantastic. They've, Thanks. So Thank enjoy those, much. throw them in your bag for all the travels, and they always have a steady place. Oh, yes. Yeah, we have, we have. We I think we, have. we've done everything we wanted to do. We have, and we've had two dropouts during the show so far. Where the and, I had, and I had just, no idea. You're no, so calm. No, I just got it back on air again. Oh, how long were we off? Never more than maybe a minute or two. Oh, okay. Maybe 30 seconds. The first time, 30 seconds. The last time we went off the air exactly while I was doing my plug for my own business. So, there you go. Oh, well. <laughs> you can give it again if you want. You're going to make good out of it. 30 seconds, Pat said. So. <laughs> we're using hotel internet. We didn't get any special treatment from the hotel on what kind of internet we were going to get. And we are plugged into Ethernet, but I'm, I'm, I knocked down the broadcast settings to hopefully minimize that, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I think that one of the best things, aside from seeing all our friends here, one of the things we really love is seeing all our friends online who are here in the chat room and watch the show every week. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to support the show, if you really, you know, it's, it's one of those things, call now. It's it's not free to run this show. George and I have been you know doing our best to, to you know to make it happen. We've kept it uh, somewhat inexpensive, which you see every week when we sign on <laughs> about ten minutes late. Uh, but we have a few sponsors. But if you'd like to help us out, we're taking donations. Just go to the Ewabs website, ewabs.com, and there is a donation uh, button there. 
give whatever you feel. We're yeah. not profiting from it. We have stuff to pay for. We're paying the bills. We're paying advertising Got to pay the fees bills because making... it, it's not free to put this show on, actually. we got to pay uh, Ustream and, and, and equipment and things like that. But I think that's going to wrap it up here from FAFCON 4. Uh, next week, we have anybody scheduled for next week? That, that I, I have some homework to do. And George has so some we will, homework. We will keep you guys posted. I've got a lot of ideas. I'm just waiting for a couple confirmations from some folks. So we'll keep you in suspense for a little while until we get it completely nailed down. Yeah, yeah. There, there were people that were that, that came in second in our poll, but you know, I, we won't we won't tell them. We'll say you were a favorite <laughs> to come on yes. our show. And uh, maybe they're not on the Facebook group, so they yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. Now here's something really amazing. This is the first time I've been in California where it rained stink. It was <laughs> raining like crazy this morning. Did and you say as it rained usual, stink? Rain, that's something my brother used to say. <laughs> it's raining stink. <laughs> I think it meant it was raining a lot. Uh -huh. It's not what I thought. It, it's not like we've been invaded by skunks. <laughs> it's, uh, but the sun is now shining here as we get towards sunset here on the West Coast. And uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. It really has. And, you know, and uh, somebody mentioned that they thank our wives. Let's put that in context, Pat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. No, we do thank our wives and our families for Putting allowing us to do this. Putting up with this every freaking it's, week. It is a, it's, it's, a, it's a sacrifice of time. We're taken away from our families on the weekend to do this. And uh, thank you, Amy and my lovely daughter, Ella, for letting us do this and run away for the weekend to do FAFCON. And uh, we love you guys tremendously. Yeah, and, and to my wife and my family, Marcy, mwah, love you. She, of course, she sends me off to these things. I said, "You want to come? Be a lot of fun." And she goes, "Go play with your fr go play with your friends." <laughs> she does. She's not quite that's into it. all this stuff. And so that's exactly uh, what we're doing. And that's what we're. we're and we've been with playing friends. with our friends all weekend, and they've been having fun with us, and we've been learning, and they've been learning some of the stuff that we've been able to give them, and we just love doing this show. But one of the best parts of this, and I know you don't, you're not a huggy type of guy, George. Yes, I am, man. Okay, you are. <laughs> you always sort of push back. <laughs> You're my buddy, and I am so glad that we've been able to do this. Do you realize this is the one-year anniversary of actually doing eWabs? It truly is. Yeah, it is the one-year anniversary for eWabs. It uh, blows my mind. 42 episodes. The 42. magic number 42. That's wow. my favorite. That's my special favorite number, too. It is? 42, yeah. Wow. That must be how we got this thing on the air today. Exactly. <laughs> we got a little lucky. It was a little kind of touch and go, uh -huh. but we didn't panic. That's the most important thing in broadcasting. Don't, don't Never panic. panic. Never panic. And the secret of the universe is 42. So you, you just did a uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference without even knowing it. Really? <laughs> wow. Well, with that one. <laughs> and, and on that note, well, that's going to wrap it up here from FAFCON 4 here in... Uh, in uh, Ventura Beach, California. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard in the east, uh, usually. And I'm George Whittem in the west. And together, and we can say this together in unison, we're East West, east -West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Have a great week, everybody, and we will see you Thanks for coming at the next FAFCON, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>